I'm Getchen Sherry with Homes Naturality, and I thank you for watching. And if this is your first time on this channel, please consider subscribing and click on the bell to be notified when I post new videos. In this episode of Let's Talk Real Estate, I will go over 20 questions, multiple choice questions designed to help you pass the Florida real estate exam. Let's get right into it. Part 14, real estate related computations in closing of transactions, closing statement, the CD. And we'll go over 20 fill in and multiple choice questions. And there are 6%, six percent, six questions from the state exam comes from this portion. Let's get started. Number one, prorated rent is entered on the closing statement as a blank to the seller and a blank to the buyer. Well, here, prorated rent is entered as a debit to the seller and a credit to the buyer. So let's say you are buying a, an income producing property from a seller. The seller collected the rent on the first of the month. You're closing on the 15th of the month. Let's assume the month is January. So January has 31 days. So the seller collected the rent on the first because she was the owner. But as of the 15th, that day belongs to you. You become the owner on the 15th. Therefore, we're going to prorate the rent and we will debit. So the seller will give you, will give you a credit for the amount that you are entitled to. That's all this is referring to. And as you can see, I highlighted the keywords that you should look for. So prorated rent is entered as a debit to the seller and a credit to the buyer. Number two, entries on the broker's statement are made as either blank or blank. Well, it will be either a receipt or a disbursement. Well, the broker's statement in essence, is reflecting disbursements that were made really outside. It has everything in it. It simply, we, mostly, what's most important are the disbursements that were made to third parties, parties that are outside the transaction. But the broker statement does give you a summary of everything. Number three, the day of closing is always charged to the buyer for blank, blank. Well, for prepaid interest, the day of closing is always giving, always charged to the buyer, meaning if the interest was prepaid. So if a seller owns a property and the buyer is assuming that mortgage from the seller and the seller had already prepaid the interest for that month, then the buyer will be charged for the prepayment of interest. Number four, the seller's blank, blank, and the buyer's blank, blank, are not usually equal due to the differences in their expenses. Well, the seller's grand total and the buyer's grand total will not be equal because they have differences in expenses. For example, well, you know the buyer has the greatest expense because the buyer is actually buying the property. So therefore, if the buyer is buying the property, well, the buyer will have a greater expense. Whereas the seller who's receiving money from the buyer Although the seller will have some expenses as well, the seller will have taxes to pay. The seller will likely have commission, broker's commission, and also some closing costs, but their grand total will not be equal. Number five, the amount the buyer is required to bring to the closing is calculated by subtracting the buyer's total blank from the buyer's total blank. Well, it will be subtracting from their total credit from their debit. Very simple. Number six, the amount due the seller at closing 
is calculated by subtracting the seller's total blank from the seller's total blank. Here, it would be subtracting their debits from their credit. It's the opposite. So the amount the seller is getting when there's the amount due, that's how much they're getting from the transaction. You subtract their debit from their credit. Just the opposite because the seller is the one getting money. Number seven, blank is paid in advance. Blank and blank are paid in arrears. Well, rent is always paid in advance, whereas taxes and interest are usually typically paid in arrears. Rent is paid in advance. So when you rent a place, you pay at the beginning of the month and then you get to occupy the premises. Taxes and interest are presumably paid at the end. Taxes, that is true. But interest, you pay that. So presumably, if you imagine, if you swipe your credit card, you swipe it today, you use the money, but you don't have to pay the interest until after, at the end of the month. That's the essence there. Number eight, the state documentary stamp tax on the promissory note and intangible tax on new mortgage is normally paid by the blank. Well, the tax on the note and the intangible tax usually are paid by the buyer. The buyer pays taxes for the loan. That's the promissory note. That's the loan. And intangible tax is also a tax that is paid on new loans only. Whereas the promissory note, you pay that on both new and assumed loans. Whereas intangible, you only pay that on new loans only. That is the buyer who pays that. Number nine, corporations are always entered on the closing statement as a blank entry. Well, corporations are always entered as double entries. What does that mean? Proration, because you are deducting from one party to the other. For example, going back to the example we used earlier, if you're looking at the seller who collected the rent, well, we're going to prorate it. So if we're prorating it, we are deducting X amount from the seller because she already collected that money. And we're going to credit that to the buyer because the buyer is now the new owner. So that is a double entry. One for debit, one for credit. That's simply that. Number 10, expenses on a closing statement are always entered as a blank. Well, expense is a debit. Imagine swapping your debit card or your check card. Once you swipe that, guess what? You are debiting from your bank account to pay for that, whatever you purchase for that purchase. So that is simply that. Expenses are usually debits. They're always debits. Let me take a moment to say thank you for supporting. And if you have not, subscribe it's very simple just hover over that picture at the bottom of your screen and click subscribe and you can check the bell to be notified when i post new videos number 11 on a closing statement how would a purchase money second mortgage obtained from the seller be entered well here Let's take a look at the keywords. Purchase money, second mortgage obtained from the seller. What this is saying basically is the seller is holding the mortgage. Holding the mortgage. So this is when a person doesn't have sufficient funds to pay or cannot qualify to get a loan from another creditor. And the seller agrees to hold the balance of the remaining amount that's due. Well, you can see here, it would be a credit to the buyer because the buyer would have to pay that. But since it's a credit to the buyer, it will be a debit to the seller because the seller is loaning that money to the buyer. Number 12, how would a second mortgage that does not involve the seller 
be reflected on the closing statement. Well, here, this is not involving the seller, so it's coming from a different source. It's coming from a bank. So therefore, it's coming from another lender, so it's not coming from the seller, so therefore it would be a credit to the buyer only. Number 13, which item would you expect to see on the broker's closing statement? Well, four items on the broker's statement. The broker's statement, you expect to see the seller's expenses that are shown as disbursement. And same thing, right? same thing for seller and buyer expenses that are shown as disbursement, those would be shown on the broker's statement. That is the whole, the whole idea. The broker's statement is reflecting mostly the main purpose of it is to show where other money goes. So section three on the closing statement reflects third party payments. You can imagine when you buy a home, you have professionals that are involved in the purchase of a home. You have inspectors, for example, you have appraisers, you have surveyors, you have title search. All of those are considered third parties. So when those payments are made, it, all the payments must be reflected on the broker's closing statement. Number 14, how would intangible taxes typically appear on a closing statement? Well, intangible taxes usually will show up as a single entry only. That would be a debit to the buyer. Why? Because the buyer is paying that intangible tax that is paid to the state. That is intangible tax pays to the state. And that would be a third party that is not involved in the transaction. So that would be a single line entry and it will be debited to the buyer. Number 15, all of the following items are typical prorations on the closing statement, except, well, if I look here, I would say D, that would be state documentary stamp taxes because all your property taxes goes towards your county, city, and school board. But when we're talking about the stamp documentary stamp tax, that is for the state. It goes towards the state. Things like your promissory note, tax on the deed, and intangible tax, all those taxes are paid to the state of Florida in this particular case. Number 16, how would the purchase price be correctly entered on a closing statement? Well, the purchase price will definitely be a debit to the buyer and it's gonna be a credit to the seller because the buyer is, set, is buying the house and she or he is bringing in money. So they'll be debited the money and the credit will be for the seller because the seller is selling the house. That's what that's referring to. And again, I bring your attention. I highlight the key points for you so you can see the underline. Purchase price entered on closing statement. How? Debit to buyer, credit to seller. Number 17, what is a closing statement? Well, a closing statement is simply a statement of the settlement cost between the buyer and seller. Simply put, a closing statement, or also known as a closing disclosure, CD, it is simply a summary of the transaction, accounting for all the monies, where they came from, where they went to. That's it. Number 18, how are property taxes accounted for in a closing statement? Well, property taxes usually are prorated between the buyer and the seller. Again, same thing. If I'm buying a house from you, you own the house from January 1st to June 30th. Well, you are the owner for those six months. You are responsible to pay taxes for those six months. However, when I bought the when I buy the property from June to December, 
I'll be responsible for July 1st until December 31st. In that case, we need for you, the seller, to give me credit, the buyer, for the time that you own the property. Because when we close the transaction, you would have been long gone. So we'll prorate the number of days. So a year has 365 days. You occupied, let's say, that would be 180 days. So six months, 180 days. And I'll be responsible to pay for roughly the remainder because I'm taking it over from 1st of July until December 31st. And literally, you have to count each day. You have to, it has to be precise. Okay. Number 19, how is an existing mortgage that is being retired at closing shown on a closing statement? Now, mind you, these test questions are not written for their uh, literature uh, appeal. They're written to confuse you. So if you see passive language, that is part of the game. So you, when you read these things, you got to take the time to understand what they're saying. So what are they saying here? How is an existing mortgage that is being retired? Well, what is a retired? The mortgage is not working. Well, what they're saying is paying it off. How is a mortgage that is being paid off at closing be shown on the closing statement? Well, that would be a debit to the seller because the seller is the one who has a current mortgage. So I'm buying your property. You have a mortgage. You have a mortgage loan. And that mortgage loan, that is being paid off. So we are paying it off. We are retiring it. So that's a debit to you from the money I'm paying you. It's a debit to the seller. Number 20. Number 20. Which entity establishes the rate for the documentary stamps? Well, I've already shared that with you. That would be the state of Florida. The state of Florida is the party. When they say entity, is which authority? Who sets, who establishes the rate? Rate means the percentage that is paid. Well, that is the state of Florida in our case. As always, folks, I thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, share, comment, and like. And truly, folks, uh, when I say for your support, your support is really subscribing, sharing, comment, and like. I appreciate those things because that's basically all I'm asking. I'm not asking for anything more beyond that. So thank you again. Have a blessed and wonderful day. And don't forget, I am with Homes Naturality. And if you need any services, please let me know. Have a blessed and wonderful day. Bye.